Hello. Can everyone hear me? Um, I saw someone asking for sound, and I want to make sure I, I, I'm, I'm heard. That song was by Paramore. It's called Misguided Ghosts. I almost tweeted it as one of Simon's song of the day, but I didn't. So that's a little spoiler for you guys. I always pick Simon's songs of the day that I think, um that, like, work with what Simon's going through and stuff, so... Yeah. Um, one sec. My lips have been getting very dry lately, and I feel like, uh, like, the drier atmosphere... It's been getting, getting very dry. All right! Shirl.mp4, you haven't finished the first part. How mad am I from 1 to 10? I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. So as you know, it has been... It's been a process to get this live going for this, for this book. I don't know why. It's been... I, got, I had a really busy week, and then I pushed it from the weekend because, to be honest with you guys, I wasn't... Um, I wasn't prepared on Saturday or whenever we were going to do the live on the weekend, and I didn't want to... I didn't want to... Uh, what's it called? I, I didn't want to, like, jump on without feeling prepared. Um, we postponed enough, so I, I had a busy week. It's been a crazy week, I guess, for all of us. I, I haven't finished either. I got to page 100, I didn't re uh, or 96. I didn't get to the last 12 pages. So, a uh, person who said, oh my god, I'm so bad, don't even worry about it. It's all good. Um, I haven't finished either. But what we'll do is we'll talk up to the point that I've read, if that is okay. Is this my room? No, this is my, uh, this is my apartment. All right, well, you finished reading? That's great. We're going to talk about the first hundred pages. Um, first of all, let's start at... How, how emotional is your reading what happened to Anne from one to ten? You know, so far, I, I haven't read anything. I, I, haven't, I haven't been too emotional. It's been more interesting, uh, more fascinating. I, I, uh... One of the things I want to talk about, uh, when we read books like this, you know, books that have huge uh, historical significance, books that led us into the world of these people, and what it was like to live at this time, um, it, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty interesting. Literally, I would say it's intriguing. Yeah, it is intriguing to, to see what they had to go through, and also, I, I'm amazed by, uh, What's the word? Resilience. I'm amazed by their resilience. You know, they, they've had everything taken away from them. They've, they've, they're living in, they're living in, a, they're hiding. They're not allowed to go outside. And they're still finding ways to keep themselves excited and, and, and keep themselves busy and, and, and doing things. Um, I, I think it's, it's a fascinating subject and it's a fascinating study in like, just knowing that things will get bad, but you can be better than, you can be stronger than those things. And, so far, I think it's great. You finished the book at lunch? That's awesome! Good for you! Um, I'm not there yet. I haven't finished the book yet. Three times. You read it three times. Wow. First time I was her age, it was really interesting to see what another girl my age had in mind all the while going through hell. Alright, okay, so let me start off with a couple of questions. If you have to go to sleep, I totally understand. I realize this isn't any... This is not our normal time. Totally cool. I'm going to post the live after, so you can watch it within the next 24 hours. Um, I'm pretty sure, uh, I want to say Bane Lewis, or Anna has uh, a YouTube channel that she puts all the lives on. I remember she told me about them. So uh, if you wanted to um, check it out on the YouTube channel after, you can as well. Sorry, I'm just deleting emails, because I hate having random notifications on my computer. I don't know about you guys. It just really bothers me. Okay, so, at the start, very normal with her talk about friends, schools, boys, and they said they can try to live despite everyone else. I didn't read, I'm sorry. Updated soon. Awesome, thank you, Anna. It's midnight, but I've waited for the live, so I'm not sleeping. Thanks, I'll check it out later. Awesome, and Frank is the book. I wish I could read the book. I love participating in the 11.30 p.m. right now in Germany. Oh, it's not that late in Germany, that's good. Okay, Browers and they posted them well, so everyone can, we can find them. Uh, the book, it, uh, Rita, did you post, is, did you find the PDF in Spanish? Is it on uh, the Resende Reads page?
All right. So on the Resident Reads Twitter, you can find it in Spanish. Si quieren buscar o quieren encontrar el libro, lo pueden uh, lo pueden encontrar en Resende Reads el Twitter account, Resende Reads PDF. Ahí puedes encontrar el PDF en español para todos lo que necesitan y también lo tienen en otros idiomas. Si alguien más lo necesita, sabes que la única introducción sobre el libro mientras tres que Well, one thing that I, I will I will say so from the from the beginning. Let's let's start with a couple of questions that I have. Um, we're going to start with: Does everyone have a basic understanding of what was going on in the world from around 1939 to 1945? Yes. Okay. Thank you for asking the question. Just uh, Jenny Lou. Yes. Okay. So everyone understands what was going on in the world from 1939-ish. That was actually when that was the invasion of Poland. The Nazi Party in Germany, I think, came to power in 1936. Sorry, I didn't. I didn't look that up to be completely accurate. But World War II was happening. Uh, the Nazi Party had gained uh, strength within Germany, and at the time of this war, was in power and was trying to increase its power and its control over the world. Um, run by a very evil man named Adolf Hitler. It was uh, 1933. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Um, so, it, it was a very dangerous time, because also at the time, one of the things that the Nazi regime was doing was trying to um, basically kill anyone that didn't agree with them or wasn't what they considered to be the best. Uh, I'm oversimplifying. I, I apologize. Um... I haven't. I've never been to the. I've never been to the Netherlands. I've never been to Amsterdam, but it's 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 uh, it's on my list, and I really want to go. But oh, I love that you guys are studying this right now. So it was a very dangerous time, um, and it's fascinating. Well, uh, just like just imagine. I, I want to take this into perspective right now. Let's pretend that in our country, or in my country, in the U.S., a certain population of people, it's, it's kind of scary, it's not too hard to, to imagine, but certain population of people would be discriminated against, segregated, and to the point where they were considered almost like non-human, treated as though they were animals, taken in cattle, taken in you know, freight trains and stuff to these places where they were being killed and destroyed and awful, terrible, horrible thing. I don't want to get too much into that because I really want to talk about the book specifically. I just wanted to talk about, you know, so everyone has an idea of what's going on at this time. Hitler had invaded Poland in 1939 and was also invading other parts in the world and other parts in Europe. And then he took, I think he did invade, uh... I do know what happened in Poland at that time. Uh, I, I've actually read and studied a bit about that. But, um... This book is interesting to me, but let's talk about, first let's talk about how we start the book. We start with Anne in a normal days. she starts writing, and it's her talking about her life, and then, I, uh, let's see, hold on, I, I was supposed to do this before, but I forgot, I'm sorry. I just want to read the first note, because I think there's something so beautiful about that. June 12th, so the point that we read, the point that I've read to... It's been, it's been a year that she's been, that this has happened. So over the course of a year, you can see how much she was, how much she changed, though, too. Oh, no, no. I know, I know Hitler was from Austria. But he rose to power in Germany. Um, so I, I want to read the first note, because I just love it. I hope I'll be able to confide everything to you, as I've never been able to confide in anyone. And I hope you will be a great source of comfort and support. So far, you have truly been a great source of comfort to me, and so has Kitty, whom I now write to regularly. This way of keeping a diary is much nicer, and now I can hardly wait for those moments when I'm able to write in you. Oh, I'm so glad I brought you along. I think it's amazing. I've actually never had a diary. Um, I've always wanted to. 
but it's not something I've ever... Uh, I, there were moments that I've written, but never consistently like this. What do you guys think about that? How many of you have had a diary or have written like this, and what type, what type of escape did it do for you? I do think she's so mature for her age. Maybe her reading of books also up. But then again, are, are girls her age most time this mature? I, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not a girl. But I have a feeling that they are. Um... I feel like guys don't get that mature for, for quite a bit of time after. Schindler's List is a great film. Um, if you do want to watch it, just because I, I would make sure you ask your parents before. I don't know how old everyone is on this on the live or in our group, but Schindler's List is a phenomenal film. I think it's important for everyone to watch at least once, but I think you, you should watch it when you're ready. It's, it's heavy. Um, Liam Neeson's performance is brilliant, and but it's it's something that sticks with you, that movie, so I'd, I'd make sure that you ask your parents. Watching her evolve is one of the most fascinating aspects of the book. I find it hard to relate to her at first. I can't remember how I felt about her in sixth grade. Oh, I wish you would have written it down. That would have been cool. But watching her evolve is kind of amazing. Uh, watching her understand things, but then choose to think more positively. Like, you see that throughout the book. Her saying, oh, they talk about the sad things that are happening outside, you know, and she witnesses it through the when she can when she can peek through the window and look outside, and, and she's seeing the world change around her, almost protected in her little bubble that is the annex. Um, so it's been amazing to watch her attention shift from the boys in her school and the girls in her school and the way people behave to the things that are going on. It's like impending, creeping in. It's yeah, I think it's interesting too. I've always failed to keep a diary, but. Instead, I write poetry in my diary as, as my diary instead of a classic diary. I like that too. The 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 few times I've ever written uh, anything in like a diary type setting, it was always uh, it's always like stream of consciousness poetry type thing. It's never really me like writing a letter. Sorry, I'm using this on my iPad now. I, I got my Sunday <laughs> day reads on my iPad, and it's not as easy to use. I'm glad how many girls are very clearly say we're more mature than dudes. <laughs> None of us are denying it. She puts tons of energy into studying and writing. It was an escape, but it all happened so quickly. And I think that's beautiful. I mean, it, it's her version of art, but it's and that's that's what art is, right? It's it's a way for you to uh, communicate your your reality around you. And I think she's doing a great job. I mean, the way she described the annex, the way she describes everyone's habits, how how um. Could you make a comment of how, uh, words are escaping me right now, how she, she picks up details about people, she studies people, it's fascinating. Yeah, waiting for maturity to kick in, yeah, me too. I don't think I'll ever really be mature. Hay partes que me rompen el corazón cuando hable sobre cuando tenga hijos y cuando sea el libro. Ella no merecía eso, no lo merecía. I agree. Paper has more patience than people. What do you guys think about that? Very perceptive. Thank you. I couldn't think of the word. Wow. Observant. Other word that I couldn't think of. Oh, and that's one thing I've noticed. Like, these people that are all staying within the annex, they seem like genuinely good people. And, and she describes them with such... Uh, such, in such detail that you start to think that some of them are annoying, but, I mean, imagine living in a small space where you can't go outside for months on end with people that are family but not family. Like, even with my family, I'd go crazy staying in, like, a room with them for more than, more than a few hours at a time. Am I right? I love my family, but it, it's a long time. Oh, that's interesting. Peter kind of reminds you of Dill from Kill Mockingbird. Expand on that. Why? She understood... Okay, so one thing in Spanish. Puedes contarle lo que quieras el papel. No te voy a juzgar. They're saying um, your, your paper doesn't judge you. And I think that's one thing that she does write about a lot, is it feels that she's constantly being scrutinized. And, and it's funny, like, at that age, I, I'm trying to think about it. Like, at that age, I think I felt scrutinized too. But at the same time, like, 
as an adult, you realize there are certain things... Um, whoa, I just called myself an adult. <laughs> okay, sorry I lied there, guys. I'm not an adult. Um, Lisa Doan. I have read Milkweed by Jerry Spinelli. Um, Milkweed's actually... Jerry Spinelli is my favorite writer when I was, like, in middle school. I read, I read all of his books. Or most of them. They're amazing. Maniac McGee, still remaining up there, is one of my favorite books of all time. Um... But as an adult, you start to, like, see things. Uh, when you get older, you start to notice more, you start to be aware of more of your behavior. And things that I think Anne Frank already does really well, that I'm, like, starting to learn to do now. But Anne wanted to be a journalist when she grew older. That's why she also kept writing. Okay, cool. But I think, I think that's, that's not Anna Kat Fernandez. She feels her mom is one that judges her most. I feel like that's true for most parents. I feel like my parents know me the best, so they, they, can, they can judge me more accurately. Other people that don't know me as well, if they judge me in some way, I kind of throw it off because they don't know me. But when my parents do, I know that they, they know me super well. They can scrutinize my, my, my changes and everything. My parents know me well. So that's why they're, they're able to do that. I saw, that actually reminds me of a meme I saw recently where it was like, how real are your parents? They, uh, they, they talk shit to your face, but then they, they, they brag about you to everyone else behind your back. That's real. And I think that's almost true, you know? I think her relationship with her mother is fascinating at that time. Like, at her current age. See, I, I can't speak to being a girl that age with my relationship with my mom. I can speak to a du as a dude with my relationship with my mom. Uh, I think even at that time, I think everyone just starts to... That's when you start to really ask questions, because you're starting to form your identity as, as, a, as a person at that age. Like, really form your identity. So I think it's, it's really these... It's, you're, you're, you're constantly testing things. Can I do this? Do I like doing this? What about this? I want to ask this question. I think it's a very important... A very, a very important phase in life, and um, I think it just sucks that she had, not sucks, but it's difficult when you have that phase in such an enclosed space, and your exploration is only your thoughts, and it can't be as physical, you can't go places, it's very... I'm not an adult, dude. <laughs> it sounds like you and I are both laughing. Like I'm not an adult. Who lets me do things? Like I don't. I don't get why. Um, yeah, I guess. I guess now. Can someone confirm this for me? Remember how her mom asked her like who's she gonna marry, and she said she knew it was Peter. Is that this is the Peter, right? This is the Peter that they're talking about. The Peter that they're living with. I think it is very common because you're, 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 you're. I think at that age you're 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 so much trying to figure out who you are that it just gets like it's hard. It's hard. It's a hard phase of life, man. I actually we uh, recently watched the movie. Oh, really quickly, this is off topic of our book. I recently watched the movie Equilibrium. I don't know if you've seen it. Very 1984. If you haven't, again, remember anytime I recommend a movie or a book, I don't care how old you are. Ask your parents, and if you're old enough to make your own decisions and, and do stuff like that, then, then you don't have to worry about it. But if you, if you live with your parents, ask them. Just I don't want them to think I'm telling you to watch movies or something that, that aren't appropriate. But Equilibrium is very interesting, and if you read 1984, you probably could check it out. And it's, it's fascinating. Um, I, I think we should have a live talking about that. But, but we'll talk about that later, because right, let's keep talking about the book. Um, you love a relationship with Peter. Okay, cool. You love the fact that she doesn't want to be like her sister. She wants to build her own identity as a woman. That made me super proud of her because all her parents do is compare to her sister. But my question to you is, is that a sibling thing? I'm not, uh, my parents always supported Diego and I having our own individual identities, and they never once compared me to Diego or Diego to me. I mean, not that I remember. But we have to think about the time, too. Remember, this was in the 40s. The role of women in the 40s was very different than it is now. So there, there is, I think there is some, remember that the 40s, this was written before, uh, before To Kill a Mockingbird was set. So I think the role of how a woman should be, which we saw in To Kill a Mockingbird with all of the women telling Scout how to act, we do see it in the Diary of Anne Frank saying she has to be a lady and she has to, you know, interesting, right? Do you think the outside world contributes to your personality? 
do you think the outside world contributes to your personality? Whether or not positive or negative, whether or not they, they make you ask questions and you get answers yourself. As of right now, I haven't cried at all yet. It's been interesting. I haven't, there's nothing that's truly upset me. Ooh, Rosende reads Germany. That's such an interesting thing. What, so what have you noticed that's different? What are the comparisons? What are the things that have, that have, that have affected you the most that you've read? If you, if you don't mind sharing, I understand that might be a little... Uh, yes, that's how you spell it, B-L-Z. Um, if you don't mind sharing, because I know it's probably personal. Um, Meow Mac number posted in your Instagram about Kat's birthday. I generally don't post about birthdays. Because if you post for someone's birthday, you have to post for everyone's birthday. And as you guys know, I have a lot of friends, and it would just be my Instagram just wishing happy birthday to people. Instead, I do it individually. I do it in person, or I call someone so they hear my voice. I make sure it's, like, very heartfelt, not just something I can post on Instagram. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm weird about that. I like to do it. So, yeah. Okay, let's talk about that quote. No one has ever become poor by giving. This quote kind of, uh, giving is not only material things but also making people smile. Yes. Anytime you give out of the truth of just giving, expecting anything in return, the return will come twofold. Maybe not the way you expect, but I completely agree with that 100%. In Florida, like a few times with my parents and my aunts and uncles, we went to like soup kitchens and stuff for Thanksgiving, and they were always, it was always so uh, amazing. And at the time, when you're younger, you don't realize how much that means to certain people to, to be giving your time and and, and supporting and helping your community. Um, and I think that's something that's awesome. Like, think about this. Question for you. How many of you guys have imagined yourself in this situation yet? What are the thoughts you have? How do, how do you think things would be different for you? In this situation, what do you think if you were part of Anne Frank's family? Now let's let's pretend it's our time, so things would be a lot more difficult to hide. Think about that. We've read 1984. We know how technology's advanced. How hard would it be for us to hide now? But if you forget that, but you think about living with your parents and your family and, and a whole other family of people in a small confined space for months on end, not being able to go outside, with only a few things to uh, to to keep time going. What, what would you think about? What, how would that? How would you behave? What, what do you think? Do you think you would have the same outlook? Would you be as optimistic or more pe pessimistic? Like for me, I would want to be more. I would want to be like Anne. I'd want. I'd want to have that, but I don't know if I could be as res resilient. Um, I'll admit that. And thank you for everyone that has, and everyone that thinks they are awesome too. Remember, one one thing I I I really want people to remember and, and learn is that strength doesn't come from being strong all the time. It comes from moments of weakness and choosing strength. Okay, I'm going to read a few of your answers. Um, so, to that question, like, what would it be like? Blah, 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 blah. Um, I would literally go insane. Suffocated. I guess it would be really hard, but I'm not sure I could handle it. Pessimistic. Okay. Would have been awful, but you had to be, you had to stay hidden. Oh, yeah, I think it, I think I wouldn't be able to have this, to be this mature. I have to have my space. Being alone is sometimes important. So, I would have put myself in that mindset as an adult. My childhood was less te tech driven, easier to imagine, and was harrowing, but I'm not resourceful. Uh, definitely extremely pessimistic more than Anne. Interesting, interesting. I, I would like to be like Anne, but I that would be nothing like Anne. Impossible, especially the media today. I wouldn't want to be like her, but I know I would be able to. It reminds me of detention centers. I wonder if any of them are keeping diaries and someday will read. I really hope we I hope I hope so. I think it would come in waves for me. I think there'd be some days where I know I'd have to be I'd have to be the inspiration for my brother or my mom or someone across the street or whoever else is staying with us. And some days I'd need to have I need to have someone to look to. Uh, I think I think like everything, it's human to get upset, and it's human to not be upset. I think all of our answers are human and important. But this is something now. 
Well, it depends on each person. I think my family would be able to handle it. I would go crazy. I'd probably be like her running pages to my diary since it was... In my situation, I'd probably go crazy or Choosing strength is not easy. That's why it's called strength. If it was easy... You know? That's why. That's why it's, that's why it's something of honor when someone chooses it. It's, it's, it's hard. You think it'd be easier if you're younger? I think it'd actually be more difficult if I was Anne's age. As an older person, I'd understand the truth and the consequences. I mean, think about Anne's father when they wanted her sister to go. Think about, oh my gosh, like, I can only imagine what it must be like as a parent. It'd be scarier, but I'd have a greater understanding of what was going on. So the value and the little rules, I'd understand more, I think, than, uh, than being, Anne's, uh, being Anne's age, 13, and not really knowing the complete truth, only knowing what, what can be told. And remember, she's still learning a lot. She's still, she just, like, four months in, was able to start reading other books, right? So I think, I think it would actually present itself as pretty difficult. Hubiera tratado de ser positiva y pensar como ella hacía en un futuro, pero siempre habría una pena de esperanza. Sorry, guys, I'm trying to make sure my iPad doesn't die. There we go. Bro? Keeping optimistic. I enjoy being by myself. People need to have... Need me. Okay, but I think there's something interesting. Do you have to be alone to be alone? I know we say that a line all the time, but like in certain places, never really alone. You know? No, this is really... Really start piss me off. What the hell? Sorry, my my, my charge is not working. And I'm like, I don't want my phone to die, but I want it to work. That's something I don't think uh, I don't think a lot of us could understand. I mean, I, I think about it a lot, frankly, because uh, if I can be honest with you guys, I just started reading. Uh, um, not reading. I started playing the new Call of Duty that's set in World War II. And I don't think people understand. Do you know how many people died in World War II? Does anyone know? I know. I just want to know if you guys know. Well, in World War II, around 65 million people died. 65 million The entire world was at war. I mean, I, I, I don't, I don't, we have nothing to understand what that was like other than the history and, and it, I, I, I can't, I can't understand it. It's, it's something unfathomable at that time. Yeah, that's the thing. Uh, I remember I was doing this with my friend. I was reading about these wars, and I asked, I asked James Poland. I was like, James, how many people died in World War One? He's like, I don't know, I don't know. And I'm like, 30, 30 million people died in World War One. It was the war to end all wars, the Great War. It's stupid that people in games and videos, things that were serious, it's an important event, and many people have died. It should not be made in something fun. That's not okay. All right, Shadow Girl two three seven. Um, I see what I see what your point is. But think about it this way: these video games are another way for people to understand and for the past to be taught. Is it some version of propaganda? I, I do believe that. But how many kids are, are reading about World War War and wanting to learn about it because of video games? That's that's my only thing. I, think about it. I played the video game World the, the Call of Duty about World War One, and that's when I started to read about World War One and learn about it. I mean. The amount of tragedy that happens because of mankind's incredible capacity to be... Incredible capacity for violence towards man. It's just... It just blows my mind. But, 
more people died in World War II. Yeah, almost twice as many. Um, do you feel like reading is a place of curiosity or lonesome? I think it's both. Okay, let's let's talk about that. Someone just said this this quote in Spanish, and I, I don't want to get I don't want to get too heavy with the World War II games and whatnot. Um. So remember the part in the diary where Anne said she's not sure if anyone's going to ever read it. What do you guys think about the importance of people actually having read her diary? What What do you think that's done for the world? Because that's something that's, that's that that I've been thinking about a lot. I'm like this thirteen year old girl wrote this diary with her family, and I don't think she ever knew that it would become something that people would study, people would read, people would seek for understanding, and now <laughs> our book club would be reading it as our fourth book. What do you guys think? It gives insight to the conditions in the society of the world at the time. Steph, that's a great answer. I agree. She moved so many hearts. I think it's because there was so much truth when she wrote. Since she had no intention of showing it to anyone, she felt no self-censorship and wrote what she felt like she wrote about. And then you saw it later. I don't know if you, what, what uh, edition you have. You know that there are three editions written. There's like A, B, and C. And the first one was the one that Anne had originally written. B was the one that her father or something had edited. There are different edited versions, but in a couple of them it shows something else she's written on top of that. So it goes like, um, I think it just blows my mind that she wrote it and not edited it, but added to her. And then there's that one that I read where she wrote back a year later and like commented on how, how, how innocent she felt she was. It reminds us we have to, don't forget what happened. Why? We just read it in 1984. The past can teach us about the future, and it's the only thing with which we can see where we're going, is by looking back. So seeing this 13-year-old girl's experience is the only way in which we can attempt to understand what a world or what an attempt, a, a thing could be like that, and how we have to try our best as citizens of this world to fight for peace so that no one else has to write a diary crammed in a room with their family. I love her adding bits too, Triforce of Dragons, awesome name again. Uh, it, it's amazing. And I think that's one of the reasons why we should all write diaries. Should we all start trying to do that as a book club? Just like writing diaries so we can, uh, we can monitor how our thoughts have changed over the last year? Ooh, Lisa Doan. I don't know if I'm saying your name wrong, I'm sorry. History doesn't repeat itself, but it does rhyme. Love that quote. Who said that? Because I might keep that. Okay, one question. I, I'm just going to answer this one really quickly. Uh, new Twitter. I'm sorry. I can't. Uh, how do I have so much time to read? I make time to read. It's hard. This week was very difficult. I will, I will not lie. It, it, it took me a lot to get through that 96 pages. So here's what we're going to do. I'm gonna, I know I have one. I'm going to do my best. And what we're going to do, it, my hair today is not good. It's been under a hat and it's like woken up. If no one, if I'm, no, 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 I'm not going to show you because you guys are going to take screenshots and you all over Twitter. My hair's going to look terrible. So let's do it. Let's start writing. Try to write in it at least once a week, just like our lives. And if you want to write more frequently, great. I'm going to start doing it too. I'm going to let you guys hold me accountable. Because one thing we could always do is right after these lives, we can go write in it for five minutes. We do this once a week. This has been a schedule for us, so if anything, if we write in it right after our lives, that'll be cool. Okay, so, um, jingly, <laughs> jingly hands, I like that. Um, because she was so young, it gives a young perspective on the Holocaust, and it's honestly amazing and eye-opening. Now, you say younger. I say, I, I think more innocent and truthful. It's not broken down. It's not someone who, it, it, it's someone who's seeing it completely innocently and truthfully what it was and how she felt. Like if you read Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl, who was, you know, a, a doctor at the time and was in a concentration camp, a totally different vibe. 
And there's a totally different way in which he speaks about his experience because of the way he's trying to study it. Even Milkweed, completely different vibe. But now this is from the horse's mouth. This is, you almost feel like you're sitting next to her under like a dim light with the windows shut. I feel like I'm, when I'm reading it, I feel like I'm sitting next to her as she's writing it. Does that ever, do you guys ever feel like that? Oh no, but really quickly, we will not talk about what we write in our diaries. We'll just say, yes, I wrote in it, and yes, I'm amazed. But what you write in that diary is 100% yours. I promise. Unless someone else reads it that you don't want, like, that's, that's for you. Just like, mine's gonna be for me. No one's reading it but me. Maybe Stella. Stella, you wanna say hi? She wants say hi. Yo, yes, Kevin Elizabeth, I saw it earlier, I'm sorry I didn't comment on it, but yes, the, the Kill Mockingbird parallelism about, you know, Scout and, Scout was younger than Anne Frank. Also, let's just talk about Anne Frank's, like, one thing I think is really admirable about her is her strength and understanding of herself. Like, I love when she's like, all these people are, you know, telling me what I am, and, but I know who I am, and I know, my, I know I have faults, but they're not as, you know, she's so grounded almost, I love that. Stella is a main coon. Yo, oh, express your feelings however you want. If you have to do paintings in journals, that'd be even better. Remember, it's your journal. Do it however you want. You want to write in it. You want to draw pictures. You want to paint. You want to take photographs and paste it in. You want to cut magazine clippings. Do whatever you want. It's yours. It's your piece of art. It's your, it's your truth. Oh, if I, I would love to visit Anne Frank's house. Um, if I'm in Europe at all this summer, I'm probably going to kick my way to Amsterdam and check it out. Songwriting absolutely counts, guys. And she accepts, yes, she's exceptional of how she is. And she's trying to get better, which you see through her schooling and whatnot, but she accepts her faults and is like, I'm learning. And that's something that I feel like at that age is very hard to do, is accept your faults. At any age, it's hard to say, I have faults. You know? So if anyone feels that way, it's completely human. If we didn't have faults, why would we be here? You learn from them. Life is about learning. So how many people on our lives have visited a concentration camp or, or even um, a very good Holocaust museum? There's, there's a phenomenal Holocaust museum in, uh, in Washington, D.C. that I've been to. Gabriela, write one. Do it. Write a diary, and then in 10 years, 15 years, you can give it to your kids or something and be like, yo, this is what that was like at that time. This is who I was. Isn't that funny? I mean, that's something I, I want to be able to do is be like, give something to my kids and be like, this is who I was when I was your age. I kind of want to write a letter to my kid when he turns like 25, because I'm turning 25. So on my 25th birthday, I'm going to write one and give it to my kid when he turns 25. So he can read where I was in life and what I was thinking about and to know that everything's actually going to be okay. Oh, wow. So, what were your experiences? And has reading this book opened your eyes or made you understand them in a new way or anything like that? Humbling. Wow, okay. That was a dork here, had it. Wow. Auschwitz, okay. What was Auschwitz? Oh, you went to Birkenau, too. Wow, those are some brutal places. What was, what was it like? How was that experience? And what is it like reading this book? Having those experiences. Oh, I don't know. That, that sounds very heavy. Thank you for offering me that, Vanessa. But that sounds very personal. Maybe if I meet her one day and she feels like giving it to me then. <laughs> I was 24, but I was not an adult, so I don't think you are either. That's what that will say. <laughs> in Berlin, okay. My parents have visited the one in Berlin, actually, and they thought it was, they thought it was humbling and beautiful as well. Truly, um...
Holocaust trip last year, Israel calls it from Holocaust to rising. For a week we were traveling all the museums in Israel and also marching, traveling, oh wow. All the museums in Norway, wow, wow, wow. When you're in a consternation camp, it's like all the people are still there. You can feel their pain, their suffering, especially when you know what went on. It's heartbreaking to think of what if. Wow, it is. Uh, Rock Solid Panda, yes, I have seen The, the Pianist, and it's, it is, is, is a brilliant film. Um, Adrian Brody actually won the Academy Award for that film. And then the next year, Charlie Theron won it for uh, Monster. But yeah, Adrian Brody's performance, uh, I think I've read somewhere that he feels, uh, I don't know how recent this is, I, mean, I, I heard that it haunt, that, that, that performance haunted him for a bit because of how, how much he learned. One of the beauties about being an actor, but one of the difficult parts as well, every, you know, I, I can't imagine going, learning all of that, that's... But there's something I want to talk about, really quickly, because we're getting, we're like 15 minutes left. But, um... El niño con el pijama de rayas. No, pero yo he visto, yo, yo he visto la, la película. There's an importance here. Two things I really want us to learn from this book. I want us to learn how important the past is. Have you seen there's kind of a theme there with my books? They're all kind of talking about the past in some way and how much we can learn from lessons that were taught in the past, how much they're still practical and still important and how we're still working. Up until, I think, maybe 2015, everyone thought everything was going to be okay. Everything was fine. All the problems in the world are solved. They're 2012 or whatever, but no. Still have a long way to go, and that's a good thing. Don't ever think that's bad. That's a good thing. The minute we cannot recognize our own faults and do not know which way to go is when we're lost. We can, and we will. It takes time. Also, one thing I want you guys to recognize in this book is, I call it the testament to the human spirit. It'd be very easy to quit. You'd be giving up your life, but it'd be easier. But no, they, they, uh, th this book has made me sad, I'm sorry. Talking about it, it's sad. It's a, hard, it's a difficult subject to speak about. When you think about all the suffering and the pain and the pain that still exists, it hasn't changed. And that will always be there. That will always be a mark on the soul that is Earth. That, that, that period of time. And it's our job to never forget. Really? The bombing of Dresden, that's... Isn't it amazing, though, that our grandparents have all these... These, these, these memories, and, and how much the world has changed since they were alive, and how many things they've been able to get through. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever spoken to Jade, but Jade's parents have amazing stories of things they've had to do to, to, to give Jade the life that he has. The, the things they've had to see. My parents, same, both my parents, immigrant parents as well, they, you know, they came to the United States fleeing some sort of oppression or some, some, something that, that forced them to leave. And then seeing the gifts that we have, even this, the ability to have this book club is, is a true gift, guys. For me, it's, it's an honor to be able to read with you and hear all of your brilliant opinions and talk to you and have you guys teach me things. It's awesome, but we can't forget that this privilege is a privilege. It's a privilege Anne Frank might have wanted if she was alive at this time. She'd totally be a Shadowhunters fan. But we have to remember that.
And that's one thing I want us to remember, the reverence with which we read this book, the understanding and the things that we talk about. Um, okay, someone asked, because I do want to kind of lighten the mood a little bit. It's getting a little, getting a little heavy. Uh, I take Polaroids whenever we go out with the cast and uh, when we go and do things, and I post them on the wall. So eventually you're going to go across the whole wall. I actually have like 50 more I have to put up. But these are all the Polaroids from Season 3, A. Since Simon is Jewish, did the book change your thoughts on his background? No, but it's... So you remember how in one episode Simon talks about his Bubby Helen and her experience in the Holocaust? Reading this novel, or this, this, this diary, makes me feel like Bubby Helen's experience might have been similar. And it only continues to ground Simon in how much his Judaism shapes who he is and how, 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 much, how much it means to the man he is. Um... Yeah. I can't show you any pictures, though, up close, because some of them might be spoilers. <laughs> um, if, if your grandfather feels comfortable with that, then yes, but I, I, I don't want you to feel like you have to, or... I don't know if that should be something that stays within your family. I, 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 that, that makes me... Honored that you want to trust me with that, but it's, it's very it's very heavy. So if you you know, uh, please share the photos. Want to stop the wall? <laughs> maybe 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 uh, maybe after we finish shooting three B or three A, maybe. Yeah, I did, I did a little bit. Um, I tried to learn about like the major holidays. I tried to learn about what Simon might have done. <laughs> what Simon might have done uh, for like studying uh, Hebrew school, all of that. Um, and then just understanding what that means as a man. I mean, you know, in Judaism, they have the bar mitzvah at the age of 13 where a boy becomes a man. And I wonder what must that be like if a faith recognizes you as a man at the age of 13. I knew who I was at 13, and I was nowhere near, I'm, I'm still almost, I'm still not there yet, you know? Okay, let's do three more minutes of book talk, and then we'll talk about Shadowhunters and next week and everything. How's that? I think my heart aches with the children of the time more. Because someone had said that their grandfather was a child of the time, and it was so hard for him to, when he finally learned what was happening at the time and everything. And I think to be a child, remember, we, in To Kill a Mockingbird, we, we talked about this. And, and think about this as well. To Kill a Mockingbird was the killing of innocence. During this time of war, when the entire world was at war, everyone's mind was at war. Everyone's mind was wondering what was going to happen next. How much innocence was lost? And Anne Frank talks about that. She looks at a past passage and goes, Wow, I look at this with such innocence, knowing that I'll never be that innocent again. It's upsetting. Have I heard a fiddler on the roof? Fiddler on the Roof is actually one of my family's movies. Like, we watch it all the time. <laughs> Me, my dad, and my pops. Hemingway is one of my favorite writers. Um, it is not the beginning of the end, but perhaps it is the end of the beginning. That's actually a super famous speech by Churchill. If you can, I would recommend reading it. Um, Churchill was such a force during World War II. It was, it was actually fascinating, and he was super smart. I have Red Knight. I read it in high school. Uh, Eli Wiesel died, what, two years ago? When President Obama had said something about his death.
Okay, let me ask that question to everyone. Why do you think Anne parents, uh, Anne's parents keep trying to keep her from having her own opinions? Why do you think that's a thing? This is the last question I'll ask, and then we'll start talking about everything else. I love Rick and Morty. As much as I want to contemplate my life, I, I, if that were to happen, I can't, because it happened. So now I have to think, how can things change? And how do I make sure that World War III doesn't happen in my lifetime? What can I do to help? It was dangerous for a Jewish person, for her safety, or maybe for a woman as well. It was dangerous for a woman to have her own opinions at the time. This is the 40s, guys. And they wanted to protect her. I don't know if we'll read The Stranger by Camus. I've read it. Um, maybe. All right, all right. So we're going we're gonna to stop book talk right now because I think, especially with Anne Frank's book, we should have a few moments to unwind, to let go, because for me, this book does, it, 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 uh, it weighs on me. A bit, and I don't want us to ever leave alive feeling sad or depressed. And this book can do that to us, especially with the thoughts and the, the paths which the thoughts take us down. So, let's confirm. So we've read the first hundred pages. We've read to a hundred. Uh, we've read to about a page one hundred and twelve. We've read, you know. Let's read another hundred pages. So, ah! what the hell? <laughs> that was loud. Okay. Uh, Rick and Morty over BoJack, because this most recent season of BoJack is my fave. But all three seasons of Rick and Morty have been incredible. I'm going to lighten the reading load this month, this, this week, so that we can really all kind of take in. So we're going to read to what my book is, page 200, which is... Wednesday, March 1st, 1944. Alright, so you're going to read to Wednesday, March 1st, 1944. That's the note we're going to read to. Well, everyone, please, um, the, the faster you tell me that you guys can tweet that information out, I can talk about Season 3 for a little bit. So, Wednesday, March 1st, that is the note we are reading to. For my book, it's page 200. So I will tell you a few extra books as well, if you guys want, so that people, I know people said this time is the time to do it, it'd be great. Um, so that's what we'll read to, I'm excited to continue, next week I'm going to have a couple questions for you and I might tweet an assignment, just to have, I want you to write one, okay I'm going to say it now, I want you to write one diary entry this week, just one, and I want you to have it for us the next time and I will actually read mine to you. How's that sound? It's just one diary entry. It could be, it could be three lines. You could say, I wrote my diary today. You're welcome. Or you could talk about your day. You could try to give us a day in the life of your life, just like Anne. I think it'd be cool. I've never done it, so I'm going to do it too, and I'll read you guys mine. And um, maybe uh, I have an idea of what I want to do, but we'll see, uh, I'm going to talk to people about that. So, so now we know what we're doing with this. Um, the next few books, we know we're reading The Alchemist next, then we're reading Tuesdays with Maury in January when we come back. Um, we're going to read... We're going to read Fahrenheit 451 as well. So that's another book if you guys want to buy it. I can't find my list anymore. Which is weird, but uh, Fahrenheit 451 is on the list as well. That's another book you can buy. Um, yeah, just keep that on the list for now. I'll talk about it more next later. Um, Fahrenheit 451 we're going to talk about in February because it's going to be cold. It has a 1984 vibe, um, which I'm, I don't know why I'm very excited to read right now. 
So that's going to happen in February during my birthday month. So, let's do it. So we have The Alchemist after this book, then we have Tuesdays with Maury, then we go right back into the nitty gritties with Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit 451, and then next week I'll have a few more books so that people can buy them in advance. How's that sound? I will not forget to save the live. I will not forget to, to post it and share it with everyone as well. So you guys know. Um, or, no, whatever you want. For your diary, it could literally be your thoughts. It could be you can describe a day. It can be something happened at work or at school or with your mom and you want to write about it. Just write something down. During, you know what? Let's try to keep a diary during us doing this book. So I'll write a diary. I'm going to do it every night before I go to bed. No matter how tired I am, even if it says, I'm doing this because I have to, I'm going to bed, I wrote today, thanks. You know? Okay, thank you for asking. I know Rita asked as well. Camille, thank you. Uh, the merch. We are going to be getting merch. We have an awesome fan who has created uh, an amazing Rosende Reads logo that I'm really happy about. Um... All the merch is going to be going towards uh, any merch that we sell here. It's never I'm never keeping any of it. I don't I don't I don't want it. I don't I don't I don't I don't like money personally. So all of it's going to help. Uh, all of the money that the, the merchandise sells is going to help this foundation in South America that helps gives uh, helps give kids access to reading, the access to education, access to food. So um, that's what's going to do. That, that's where it's all going. Um, so you guys know. I don't have any more information on that yet. I still have to work on a bunch of stuff because to sell merchandise and to make sure that it's all going in the right places without any of us getting in trouble, it's, it's a bit of a process. So um, so you guys know that that's, our book club is going to be actively helping. Um, what else? I'm also thinking of... I, I don't want to talk about that yet. So maybe we'll have... I might have a live... Sometime this week that we're not talking about books, so we can just talk about the plans for Rosende Reads. Because I have big plans for us, guys. Remember, it's always good to set big goals and then work as hard as you can for them. Um, I almost gave away a spoiler. So we have one minute left. The, 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 the clock started ticking. I'm sorry. This week we will have another live. Okay? We will do another live just so we can talk and we can talk about where Rosende Reads is going. You guys can ask me questions. And there's no... Uh, there wouldn't be any book talk for you guys to have to worry about what we're talking. Like we, it can just be questions and stuff. Um, Leah, that's a question you can ask this week. So, 39 seconds. Remember, we are going next week, probably Tuesday or Wednesday. We will have our live again. It will be up to page 200 in my book, which is March 1st, 1944, I believe. Someone make sure I'm right about that. I have 26 seconds, so it's going to cut off. Um... I read episode 10 for season 3A. Oh my gosh, you guys.